Welcome back. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. Today we have a case study to think about and to talk about and it is a current situation that I am trying to manage at the moment so I will do the introduction of it. We're looking at an organisation that has gone through some considerable change, been around for 40 plus years and is now looking to move itself from that initial uh, organising group, the starting group, the foundation members, into something that is a little bit more interactive in today's environment for an activity that is a recreational activity. And so the people who are on the management committee are volunteers with other pressures on their time and they come to the committee with a range of skills and capabilities. We have looked at a particular process for an activity that is held fairly regularly, four times a year, and determined that we needed to have some processes and some checklists and some rosters and all those sorts of things that you might think are needed for running an activity of this particular kind over a weekend and would think would be appropriate. If you looked at it in a business sense, you would think, well, yes, you need to have all those things. How can you manage it otherwise? But we remember that this is a voluntary organisation and so they haven't been exposed to that kind of management before. We have gone through a process of determining paperwork we need for those activities, what processes should be gone through before the activity starts so that the activity can run smoothly and everyone has shared responsibility for parts of the activity that they need to happen. That hasn't been an easy process. It has been a long, drawn-out and often fought process, not overtly fought against, but just in terms of the way we all deal with change and the way we deal with, in a sense, losing something that we enjoyed in the past and we know has to change but we don't really want to be part of the change because we don't really want it to change. We want it to be like it was. All of that said, that we are now at a point where the processes have been agreed, the Activities are organised in such a way that everyone has responsibility for particular activities so that it doesn't fall back on one person, which it was doing in the, in the past 12 months. And we come to the first opportunity to see how this process actually works. There's a few road bumps along the way in the week before the activity in terms of filling out the roster and getting people to commit to actual tasks that they're going to perform at the weekend. But that is in place. We get to the weekend and the first 12 hours of the weekend go according to plan and then one conversation happens and the whole plan falls apart. The weekend still carries on the weekend. The, the, all the activities are completed over the weekend and that those participating in the weekend, apart from the committee, feel like it's been a fabulous weekend, they've all had a great time and they're all very impressed with the way the organisation has worked but the organising committee are left feeling like it has been not a successful weekend in terms of their involvement in the activities being curtailed because they had to do things that they weren't planning to do, that they weren't on the roster to do, all of that sort of thing. And it all came, really I feel, it all came about because of one ill-managed conversation. We now want to have a look at how we could have managed it better and, and really, if there is a better way to manage it or not, or is it just this is part of the progression of moving this organisation from what it was to what it needs to be? Being on the outside and listening to this case study, I think the number of things I would look at first is that conversation, could it have been handled differently? The answer is probably yes, but not by the person involved. And maybe to have that conversation with the person. It sounds to me like it is, it's quite different to being in a business, as you said, because in business, uh, this is the way we're going to do it. We agree and we stick to it and there is consequences if you don't. In a voluntary type of organisation, I think people hang on to what they're comfortable with. They hang on to what they have done before and they don't see the damage or the lack of what I call opportunity lost mm -hmm. as a result of them not adopting all their procedures mm -hmm. instead of partially. Yes, you, you can take the trouble to 
explain it again and show them. But maybe the only hope you have in this situation is you have the majority coming along the, the mm. journey with you. And then hopefully the one or two or the minority, I should say, would then follow. And if we can just show them that, yes, it did go all right, even though it nearly was chaotic, but it got rescued by the right committee people. But how much better it would have gone if this whole thing was followed through. The, the other thing is, I would say, it can be very frustrating. I, I, as I'm hearing you talk, I was thinking, ah, oh, it's so obvious, why not? It's all right on the outside to do that. But when you're in there and you're trying to show respect to each other and backgrounds and contribution over the years, it's not so easy. So one thing would be is for your own sanity as a committee is to say, let's have a look at how much have we done? How much change have we already impacted the organisation? The difference that made. Other thing is is to share that, not by calling it change, but just say achievements and share that in a celebration way with the whole group. And this way, hopefully, the ones that never saw the benefit or saw the need might say, oh, you actually, we did all right. So positive reinforcement, remembering how far we came and celebrating success. Well, I hasten to add that the, the conversation wasn't acrimonious. There wasn't an angry exchange. It was a request that was made and the request was met without thinking about what the consequences right. for the broader planning of the end would have mm. been and, then, and what it meant in, in accepting that request was that it, the organisation of the weekend simply went back to the way it had been for the past 12 months, which, which wasn't satisfactory for the people involved. It's, I think it's not dissimilar to some things that you face within the workplace where you are trying to bring in change and bring in change not for the sake of change but because you see a longer-term benefit or the change needs to happen for something to exist longer term. So in that sense, the sooner you do it and the smoother you do it, the better off you will be with the end result rather than have that change forced upon you at some time in the future because it, then it really becomes vital that it happens at that time. So you know, while you've still got the opportunity to choose to change and to choose to develop, that you do that and you implement it and you ensure that even if people don't agree with the change or can't see the benefit of it or see the benefit of it but don't want to be part of it, and I think that's a lot of the case at the moment mm. is that they definitely see that there is benefit in change and development and opportunity being taken. They are not comfortable being part of it because they're of a mindset that says, if I do this, then I'm negating everything that I've done up to this point. And if I do this, it means that all that I've done up to this point is not important anymore. Whilst it might have been important then and I identified with it then, I can't identify with this new stuff because I don't understand it or I'm not really part of the change. I just see that it has to happen and it's passing me by. And so we, we have that combination of self-worth and self-usefulness combined with an age factor, which is the case in, in this, at this point in time. And so we have to manage that balance fairly well also. I think to try and get the point across that it's continuous improvement in anything we do and in life in general, because when that group took over whatever years ago, they built on what they were handed and now the current group is building on all the good work that they have done and so on and so forth. I think maybe in some cases people think, no, it was perfect and <laughs> you don't need to change it even if they don't say it like that. The older I get, the better I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the continuous improvement thing to me is you're always trying to make things better when when you doing them yeah. and then you expect that whoever takes over from you will make them even better. To get that concept across, sometimes it's easier for some than others. So I guess continuous respect to what was done in the past is a plus, but also sometimes might need a little bit of a harder thing about saying, no, look, we agreed and we agreed to move in this direction for a good reason. 
and now we all got to stick with it because it can be worse to do it halfway, half of the old and half of the new. It's lucky in this case study that it didn't end up a, a big schmozzel, but um, you, it was nicely saved, but it, it could have, it could have got bad. But I think too that you have to start to manage yourself in this situation if you're the fulcrum yeah. for this, this change that you need to look at how you are dealing with it on a personal level as well as on the organisational level, that you need to step back from the immediate reactions that you have, you know, particularly if you're the team leader, and think about the team as a whole, the end result as a whole, and keep your focus on that end result, keep your eye on the prize, and not worry so much about what was supposed to happen, what should have happened, what we agreed would happen, and just keep focusing on moving forward towards that goal. And the momentum that you build by doing that and by these people seeing that you are focused on that end point means that they have less opportunity to wallow in the what-ifs and you should have and, and this should have happened and that should have happened and we said this and said that and move away from the historical regurgitation and move mm. towards the the target that you're trying to reach in bringing in these changes, bringing in these developments. I think we've probably covered that pretty yeah. well. Good little case study. If you've got anything that you would like to add in terms of managing that situation, we'd be happy to hear from you. For now, I'm Kim Bailey, she's Fuliana Osborne, and this is Inside Exec.